Well, the uh, two parts that I was waiting for showed up in the in the mail the other day. Uh, I got a good deal on these because they were just had that slight amount of surface rust on them. Let's see if you can. upside down there we go so we have a Boston L127Y and let's see if I can find the number on this one Ah, well, it's, I don't think the camera will pick it up, but that's L102Y. The only difference in these is the, is the bore. I wasn't concerned about the bore at all, as long as they mesh and fit. And they're just about it perfect. Let's see if I can hold that. They're just about perfect to mesh with the old gears in the gearbox here. So, and this one here is still good. I'm going to go ahead and machine this off. And bore this out. And we're going to put it on here. We're going to go ahead and machine this one to look like this one. And this one goes up in the top of the gearbox there. So you can see the difference there. Just need to take off a little bit and bore that out. And should have a good working screw cutting lathe again uh, when I get through with all this. So, we'll come back when some of the machining's done. Yeah, I just wanted to show when you're machining these AMAC parts, you get these really stringy chips, and I'm habitually having to go back and pull them off of the work so that I can see what the heck I'm doing. You know, but it seems to be machining okay. It's, feels like it's just very stringy material and uh, we'll come back in a moment here when the rest of this is machined off and now you can see we just have this center portion and we're ready for the next step. Uh, yeah, this stuff does not really like to be, I don't really think you could call it free machining, but if you could, if you're careful, you can get actually a fairly decent finish. Well, that's not super important because it's, it's not going to be seen anyways. So, on to the next step. Well, here it is. I've faced it off so it's the proper length now. Let's see where there was set screws. and We'll probably, probably drill this and tap it for the set screws and move it up. So the next step now is to bore this gear out so that it slips on there. And then we'll worry about fixing it in that position. So, we'll be back in a moment. Mm. There it is. So, all we've got to do is fix these two together, 
and this part's done. On to the next one. Well, we're getting there. This isn't secured yet. I think I have to take a little tiny bit more off of this gear, this idler gear here, just so that it moves a little bit more free. But there she is. So we'll have this lathe cutting threads and running the auto feeds again in no time. Okay, so I've just decided I was gonna. It's my original idea. Put some red Loctite on this gear and slip it on and let that set up. Uh, the idea behind that is that hopefully, or hopefully not, depending on how you look at it, but should something happen again that would jam up this mech. Uh, that connection should hopefully break and allow this to slip so as to avoid breaking uh, breaking any of these gear teeth although I doubt any of the gear teeth on this will break even in that event because this is this is steel now uh, so we'll see how that works out uh, but I think that the that ought to be okay. Uh, all right. Well, I've I've also that's probably still got some time to set up. It says 24 hours, so I've got this gear finished up, and I'm happy with that. It's in there, good and just the perfect amount of tightness. No play, but moves freely meshes meshes very nicely with the existing gear so I'm pretty confident when I get this back together it's gonna to make for an excellent repair uh, if you've got an issue with these boxes uh, with this box on your lathe it's a great way to repair it and a lot cheaper and a lot more sturdy than uh, than these original parts you know I've seen these uh, the fellow uh, Bob Mullins check it out some of his videos uh, he's got an atlas that rebuilt his actual the actual box was broken and did a beautiful job on it but noticing his shift collar was actually made out of brass in his box, or bronze, which leads me to believe somebody remade that at some point. Uh, mine's the original Zamek material. <sighs> Alright, well, it's uh, starting to get a little late now. You know, it's... Uh, I've done all this. I got these parts yesterday, day before Thanksgiving, and today's Thanksgiving. So, I think I'm going to go to bed and uh, probably come back to this tomorrow and let this fully cure. And, uh, with any luck, hopefully in the next couple of videos, uh, we'll have it all back up and running perfectly. I still need to address the issue of the end bearing that's broken. Uh, I've got some aluminum around that uh, I think will be large enough, block, a little block of aluminum, that I could make one of these out of. I tell you, I really wish I had a little, little foundry set up for things like this because I would just, I would like to just cast this, cast it in bronze or brass. Uh, 
like I said in another video, these were, and anybody familiar with these lathes knows it, but these were meant to break in the event of some sort of accident so that you wouldn't break gears in this gearbox or, you know, break your change wheels. Uh, which are, of course, more expensive to replace than this, but... You know, when I remake this out of aluminum or, or whatever material I end up choosing, uh, it's probably not going to have that property anymore, so I'm going to have to build that into the new one. And my thinking on this is to bore this out larger and put a press a bronze bushing or a brass bushing in there that's large enough that should something happen it would just press that bushing out we'll see have a good night